wait i'm going to open the door hello hi Please come welcome home naila come here Ellie really say hello. Should we start with your favorite spot in your house? Yes, please come. It is this side. I love to sit here in the morning. It's easy, breezy, green. Yeah, this is what I like to do. Wow. How long have you lived in this house, Mona? Um, it's going to be 2 years now. We moved in last year in Jan. So when I'm before this where were you staying? I was staying with my parents my and that house is just 5 minutes away from here and that is exactly why we you know selected this house because I wanted to be closer to my parents. You are an army child, right? Yes. Uh, you moved a lot of cities. How was that for you as a child? Very uh you know we've had a beautiful childhood but so much exposure. Uh my father was mostly in the east. so we were posted in you know tezpur odisha uh, siliguri uh, guwahati so we used to change schools after every two years two and a half years making new friends all over again you know as a child i used to crib about uh, traveling from one place to another in just two and a half years because you know the minute you get close to the teachers and you start making friends you want to have a bond your parents get get posted out <laughs> so i used to tell my dad are yaar humko chhod do you know i love the city and my dad was like you know just be open be open to travel be open to making new friends and you will discover a lot more about yourself now can we talk a little bit about you becoming an actor how did that happen for you it did not happen by chance for sure i was very clear what i wanted from life i was very clear that i wanted to pursue acting but my parents were very clear about one thing that i need to finish my graduation because just in case if things don't work out i always have a backup plan my dad had retired and settled in pune so i used to travel every day uh, in that old asiad bus i used to give auditions all day for ads and then take the night bus back to pune and then one day just he happened and my parents told me that you will only move to bombay when you have something concrete you know in hand and then move i said okay so 2003 i got jassy and then i moved here with my bags and i called my parents also here i needed them with me they are my support <laughs> how the tables turned right they started to travel for you now yes <laughs> yes yes you know i don't think i've shared the story with anyone and i shall tell you swati <laughs> in 2002 my sister had filled up a form for me for singapore airlines and she didn't even tell me about it you were saying what have you done so she said no go explore travel the world you will earn in dollars i'm like suna i really haven't thought about it like that because i want to be an actor she said like, of course you can but ye bhi dekh le hota hai nahi hota just go for the interview i said okay now i didn't know what all my sister had written in in the form so i went for the interview i came with my dad to bombay we went to the taj i gave my interview and stuff and they are like what are your hobbies so i was like um i like singing and those guys were reading my forms and they're like but here it says reading i was like oops see <laughs> that's my sister <laughs> so yeah i i did clear all the rounds of interviews i was selected shortlisted then i got my visa and i remember sitting you know with my parents and telling them that listen i i know i've got the visa and i have to leave in like few days but i don't want to do this i am not cut out for this i want to be an actor and my dad was like you know beta this is this is your call we don't want to force you for anything it's 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 your call your life your decisions your career it was a tough call to take i remember coming to bombay with my sister and cancelling my work visa and making a lame excuse that oh i'm getting married and stuff and i need a, i need to be out but just a year after that in 2003 i got jassy and then we went to singapore in singapore airlines <laughs> to shoot in singapore for jassy and i was like papa ye hui na baat <laughs> life comes a full circle a full circle absolutely would you like to walk around and show us some more of your house yes hacks? let's go this yes what's that this is <laughs> my chotu idli ka ghar This is called his pen. It is his playroom. It is yeah. his sleep room. During the auditions, all those years, how many years did you first see audition for before you got Jassy? 
So uh, 2002 was actually when I started coming to Bombay for various auditions. I was only concentrating on ads and TV. TV because when I was in school, I used to watch uh, Dia Tony's show "Banegi Apni Baat." And back then, in the 90s, I had decided that this is what I want to do, and these are the makers I have to meet. And then from a TV directory, I got Dia Tony's number. I called them up, approached. and they were you know gracious enough to call me to their office and then they started auditioning me for Jessie i remember i must have given some 50 odd auditions for Jessie and i told dia i was like dia i am spending a lot of money coming from pune to bombay for this one audition which you're making me do every day i was like what is happening is something going on or not because you're only trying different things on me braces hair chashma I said, "What's going on?" And she's like, "Mona, I can't tell you anything right now. Just wait, wait for another week." And then a week later, after I came to Bombay, I got a call from Dia, and she said, "Mona, congratulations, but don't tell this to anybody but your parents. You've been signed in." I was like, "Acha." She's like, "Welcome aboard for Jesse Jesse Koi Nahi." A regular launch, right? Yeah. You look different. People usually want to come out looking like at least a <laughs> little bit like themselves, yeah. glamorous. So, what really made you take that call? I'm sure the creators is one reason now that I understand. What else? The story. What a story! And imagine a titular role. I wasn't even sure if there was going to be a makeover or not. I wasn't sure, but I was willing to take that that risk because it just sounded so good. Because it just sounded so refreshing, so different. from whatever we were seeing on screen at that time people didn't even know how i looked my co-stars didn't know how i looked oh. yeah they didn't know how i looked because the channel was very very particular in not giving away any of my you know details to anybody that where i live how i look what did i do in the past and i also remember when jassi came out just 6 months before that i had done an ad with asian paints and asian paints started airing that ad ev after every break and the channel was freaking out it was crazy and i also remember the paps uh, challenging the channel that we will figure out who she is and we will get out the pictures and you know put it out in the uh, everywhere not social media tab to tha hi nahi but papers that this is who she is and this is how she looks What was life like after Jassi Jassi Koi Nahi for you? Life after Jassi, I just suddenly felt that, oh my God, my phone isn't you know buzzing. My there are no calls. There are no call times to reach a set. I suddenly felt so lost. I was like, ये क्या हो रहा है? I was like, what do I do now? Because the the show lasted for two and a half years, and that was also my call not to you know take a leap or have a child. Because I said I'm just 24, 25. I said I'm not going to do this. Then Sony signed me on, and I did Jhalak Diklaja, won that. Then I hosted Jhalak Diklaja. Then there was no looking back. It was a conscious effort. I wanted to stay away from daily soaps right after completing Jassi because you see Jassi was so huge that I, 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 and I knew, I knew somewhere that there cannot be any other show bigger than Jassi on TV for me. So how did three idiots happen for you, and what was it like, you know, working with all of them on the film? I got it in a very, very filmy way. I was in New York. I was hosting a Bollywood evening, a Bollywood awards evening, and uh, Raju Hirani sir was there. And uh, I remember him approaching me and telling me that Mona, I want to cast you in a movie that I am doing. So I was like, Sir, this is so filmy. You're telling me this in New York. Oh, I don't believe you. And when we came back to Bombay, three months after that, I get a call from Raju sir, and he's like, "Chalo, Mona, office out." I was like, "You remember?" He's like, "Of course." He's like, "I don't faff around. Just come." I said, "Okay." And I remember shooting my first scene in in Shimla. uh karina's uh, that wedding sequence was going on and raju sir announced on the mic mona welcome to bollywood and everybody clapped i was how like nice. wow how nice such a sweet warm welcome my god from the entire team and ak and sharman and all of them were so gracious they came up to me and said listen we are your fans you were so good as jassi i was like are yeah you know how nice set stars they don't have to do that but yeah. they made me feel so special and wanted uh, usually when we see actors on screen we always have a certain image about them right hmm. like we think maybe ye aisa hoga wo waisi hogi uh-huh. so when you met say karina amir on the sets was there anything that you thought of them that were like no that's not true at all like the way i was thinking yeah when i met amir on the set i was like okay you know my preconceived notions were that okay he's going to be a very strict guy and he won't talk and maybe you know he'll have some kind of attitude because he is a genius 
and he knows it all, Mr. Perfectionist. But then later I realized I was like, Are, so sweet, you know, trying to help everybody, talking with everybody, treating everybody as an equal. I, I love that quality about him. I think, you know, that's the best quality of being a star. You just become more humble, and that's what Amir is. And Karina, of course, I thought, oh, she will be poo. <laughs> but she is in poo. <laughs> She's yeah. so real. People do have these preconceived notions about every celebrity. Yes. My mother also. I'm like, Mama, no one is. They all are working, they all are professionals. Yeah. 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 You know, speaking of your mother, we see this painting. On oh, that yeah. Wall. And you said something to us before we started shooting. Please tell us something about that painting. My mum has gifted this painting to me. My mum paints really well. She has also been a teacher of interior designing and architecture in Delhi. When I got married, Mama told me that my gift to you is going to be a painting and just find a special wall for it and I shall gift you. So there you go, 2019, the year I got married. How nice. This is my bedroom. I'll just switch on all the lights. Thank you. Wow. So what we did was we broke two rooms and made it into one. Yeah. So this was a 4 BHK, which we, you know, made it into a three and a half BHK. So this was basically a bedroom and I wanted it to be my wardrobe area where we get ready. When I have my team, hair makeup team, they come here and we have ample of space to get ready and stuff. Yeah. I also didn't want to fill up my house with too many wardrobes. This is the only wardrobe we have. Okay. And yeah, I have lots of clothes in my mum's house, but that's ah. a separate issue. <laughs> Tell us how life has changed for you after marriage. It's just become better, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just feel that I have a companion with me 24 hours. It's just my life has become better. He's, he's a beautiful guy, very understanding, caring. We're there for each other. And I think in marriage, it is very important to know that you're together as a team. As long as you know that, you will always stick together. The only thing I feel is that unconditional love is not happen with husband and wife. Mm. It only happens with parents. <laughs> I fully agree with you. Yes. Is it a role of yours that he absolutely loves? His favourite? Bulbul. He keeps calling me Bulbul. Mm. And I remember after watching Made in Heaven, he, he and I watched the series together. I couldn't have watched it with my parents. They're, I told them it's a very bold show. I'm not watching it with you. <laughs> <laughs> after the show got over, my husband, you know, came up to me and he's like, listen, I want to hug you. So I was like, okay. I thought it was for the performance. But he hugged me and he's like, listen, I'm sorry if I've ever been rude to you. Mr. Jory is a perfect man <laughs> and I want to be like him. I was like, oh, oh change has begun at home. <laughs> there was a time way back, even when you started and even before, a little bit before you, there was this expiry date for women actors, yes, right? Yes. Um, and it was, I think, real trouble because a lot of great actors were not getting work yes. or a lot of them choose, chose not to do work because they didn't like what they were getting. Yes. Right. Mm. Have you ever experienced that in those days? you know when you were being offered something you didn't like you know or which is because you played a certain role so you were being stereotyped after three years i started getting similar roles i was like i don't want to do it i'd rather wait it out say no to projects that i don't want to be a part of and and just wait it out and what do you do while you're waiting I did, I, I started hosting shows, something that I've never done. I started doing theatre, that's something I've never done. And I'm very happy about the fact that I, I didn't do anything and everything just for the heck of being seen. And now people are giving me all different kind of challenging roles. Times have changed, OTT has changed roles for women. We are not just cast to fill in gaps. We are cast for solid roles. We are playing grey, we are playing positive, we are playing flawed. There, there's, there's so much to a woman other than just being a, you know, a, a damsel in distress who needs a hero to save her. No, we are much more than that. Will we talk some more? Uh, should we take a walk? Yes, should absolutely. This is my kitchen. I don't know if you want to see, but... Oh, we'd love to. Do you cook? Do you like to cook? I love to cook. The only thing I don't enjoy is the chopping and prepping. <laughs> so I tell my house to do all of that. But um, yeah, I do cook. I cook everything. Punjabi, Chinese, uh, Indian, Italian. I don't bake, uh, but um, I can cook anything. Now we'll go here. Come here, come here. He's back. 
<laughs> How cute is he, yeah, boy? My little brat. Is he this bouncy little baby all day long? See, he's giving camera facing. Oh my god! <laughs> Hello. The last room is just my um, my husband's office. Okay. So whenever he wants to work from home, if there is any, you know, editing work or something, then he sits here. And oh, I love wow. this space. I just love this space. Come on, let's sit. Idli, are you going to give us an interview as well? Hello, Idli. Bow bow. <laughs> <laughs> Mona, you know, earlier we were talking about how things have changed for women in the industry. Yes. Right? Is there anything else you still think the industry needs to change when it comes to women actors? What I don't like is people calling out to women directors. Ajna many women director, woman director ke saath shoot kiya. What is a woman director? A director is a director. I don't like that term at all. I think that should change. So when you came in here, what were some of the things that stood out to you and you said, oh my god, it's really challenging? See, I think everything in life is very, very challenging. Whether you go to a new city or a start a new job or, you know, do anything that that scares you, that is unknown, it is scary. But for me, I think what helped me the most was my parents moving in with me. I think I also made great friends in the industry. Gaurav Gera, you know, right from my first show till now, 20 years of friendship. So I, I never felt overwhelmed in the city. I did not. In fact, the city has actually fulfilled most of my dreams. Yeah. So yours to happiness. Lots of great roles <laughs> uh, where we see more and more layered characters of Mona Singh. Thank you, and Swati. Thank, thank you so you. much for welcoming us at your beautiful, beautiful home, Mona. Really, thank you so I'm much. I'm so glad you guys could come. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs>